Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail Davy Crockett. entitled Davy Crockett. It's not the whole story of Davy Crockett. I don't think anyone could do that because Davy Crockett is a legend. A legend as powerful and colorful and exciting as the legend of America itself. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, America looks up to her men in the sky. Yes, our country looks up to the young men thundering their way to new glory in the skies. Theirs is a task held in high esteem by the entire nation. You are needed to swell their ranks and can do so by enrolling now in the Aviation Cadet Training Program of the United States Air Force. If you're between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, have had two or more years of college and are otherwise qualified, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and ask about the Aviation Cadet Training Program. Do it today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Davy Crockett. American. Davy Crockett was one of the most colorful and romantic characters that enlivened our American past. It's natural to link his name with the Alamo, for it was there he fought and died with that gallant little band of Texans. But up until that fateful day, Davy Crockett led an exciting and eventful life. Soldier, hunter, writer, statesman, humorist, and orator. There was little he didn't try his hand at. Let's travel back to the time of Davy Crockett, the time he went down the Red River on a steamboat to Nagadoches. <laughs> Step right up, gentlemen. Step right up. Let's see if the hand is quicker than the eye. Now watch the thimbles. Watch them carefully. All right. Under which thimble lies the beam. Hey, you there, stranger. Can you tell me? Why, why, sure. That one right there. Why, stranger, you got the eyes of a cougar. Yeah! <laughs> come on, come on now. Try again. Now, focus your gleaming orbs. Watch careful, like. Now, which one? Uh, well, that one there. Well, I'm totally flabbergasted. <laughs> Stranger, I ain't never seen the likes of you. Uh, what do you say we make a sport? Say, uh, shilling? Well, uh, I don't mind if I do. All right, now, here we go. Watch close now. Watch close. <laughs> you, stranger? Want to take a chance? I never gamble, sir. Principled against it. Oh, I see. Well, uh, them my sentiments to a notch, but this is not gambling by no means. A little innocent pastime, nothing more. Uh, near clean me out. Ah, now, stranger, just because you lost the light in them cougar eyes of yours, don't blame Carlton Thimble Rig for your misfortune. <laughs> Well, what about it, sir? What do you say? Stake a trifle? Uh, I don't care how small. Just for the fun of the thing, huh? Well, I'm principled against betting money. But I don't mind going in for dinner for the present company. I'm hungry as a wolf in a blizzard. Well, sir, I admire your principles. And to show that I play with these here thimbles just for the fun of it, I'll take that bet. Either one or t'other of us is going in to stand to feed for this here group. Yeah! Just say when, stranger. Now. Now? The bean is under the middle thimble. Hold there. I'll lift the thimble. <laughs> well, sir, well, sure enough, you've won.
on the bet. But I don't care if I give you another chance. Even though I'm a whole hog temperance man, we'll make it drinks for all present. I'm sure you'll win. Then you're a darn fool to bet. Since that's the case, it'd be a little better than picking your pocket. So I let it alone. Well, now, I don't mind running the risk. But I do. Since I always let well enough alone, I've had enough glory for one day. Let's all go to the table. Eat at your expense. Yeah! Uh, say, uh, stranger, might I uh, ask your name? You might. I'm Colonel David Crockett, Tennessee. Well, now I'll be struck by lightning and rolled in a keg of bar grease. Friend Thimble that's what I call a fine meal. Oh, thanks. When you can eat the way we all have and not have to pay for it, that's a mighty fine meal. Now, we owe it all to you. Well, Colonel, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Kind of rests uneasy in my stomach, though. Maybe get your pocketbook mixed up with your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> well, poorly. That's how I feel. Poorly. Gentlemen! Gentlemen! Gentlemen, can I have your attention for a moment? Gentlemen, in just a few minutes, we're going to put in the Caspiana. Now, I got a score to settle in this alligator den. And I can use the help of any man who's got snake blood in his veins and welcomes a little tussle. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you're all a crew of roarers. Now, the reason for my peeve is this. Last time down the river I put in to Caspiana, sent one of my men ashore to buy provisions. Well, the good citizens there beat him most severely and robbed him completely. Yeah, I was unable to repay them at the time for their gesture. And now, with your gallant help, I hope to return their kindness. You got any particular plan, Captain? No, Colonel ain't. Just thought we might quite naturally take the town apart. Well, surely the whole town can't be to blame for the treatment of your crewmen. That's true enough, Colonel. The whole thing took place at the Silver Bear. Stands right plumb on the river's edge. Worst den of the devil this side of the Mississippi. Well, why don't we hold our little party right there? Then innocent folks won't be getting trampled underfoot. That's agreeable to me. Captain, we're pulling in. All right, boys, let's get out on deck. Take her in close. Looks like they got some idea what we got in mind. Look at them run. They lock themselves up in there like a pack of weasels. Yeah, we'll get them out and we have to burn them out. All right, hold her up. Captain, I got an idea. Them fellas will be hard to take. Some of your passengers might get hurt. Colonel, we're going to tear that place apart stick for stick. Now, don't get wolfish around the head, Captain. You see them two pillars in the front of the place? I do, and I'm going to break them with my bare hands. Suppose, instead of doing that, you was to put that heavy chain you got there around both of them. And then suppose you was to back your steamboat out of here for all she was worth. What do you suppose might happen? Well, now, if that ain't the prettiest thought I ever did hear. Colonel, you're plumb spectacular. Well, I just figure the Silver Bear needs cleaning out. What better way of cleaning it out than to drag it into the river? <laughs> Colonel, it's a pleasure to have you on board. Now listen, you roars. The Colonel's got a little ID. Well, I guess we're all ready to begin. I'll have the crew take the chain and put it around the pillars. Captain says it was my idea. Seems only natural I should go with him and see everything turns out correctly. Go ahead, Colonel. I gotta go, too. You boys, pick up that chain and do like the Colonel tells you. If you need help, we'll come a-running. Forward, you snappers! Now, boys, you just make that chain fast around both them pillars. The rest of us will stand right here and see to it that the inmates of this 
doomed establishment remain within. Hey, strangers, you come any closer and we'll plumb carry it a bit. Hey, you show your ugly jaw, we'll make a drinking horn out of it. All right, hurry it up now, boys. What's the idea of all this, stranger? We ain't harmed you. We ain't spoiling for a fight. Well, we are, so stay in there. That's good work, friends. Now let's get back to the ship. This'll be a sight I'll admire. We may be making history here today. Belay, friends, belay. My fireman's got to hear my command, so I'll be obliged if you save your throat till after we've had a try at it. Now, Colonel, since this was your ID, why don't you give the command? Why, Captain, I'd be honest. All right, Colonel, whenever you're ready. Go ahead! Liberty and independence, fire Bears become a wet goose. Tim Rig, I'm glad you've decided to give up gambling and come along with me. Colonel, after what you did, I'd take it a pleasure to go anywhere with you. Well, we'll be off for Nacogdoches in the morning. I ain't never hunted buffalo before. Ought to be some sport. Yeah. Hey, speaking of sport, looks like a fight on down the street. Well, let's go. Never like to miss one. I say you're an infernal scoundrel, you hear? I do, but it's news to me. Say, I know that, Hooper. I met him in New Orleans. That's the bee hunter. Well, you distinctly called me a cat. If you insist upon it, you may. You hear, gentlemen? You hear the insult? What shall I do with this scoundrel? That I'll do at once. Come one step this way, you rascal, and I'll flog you within an inch of your life. I have no occasion. You're a coward. Not on your word. I'll prove it by flogging you out of your skin. I doubt it. I'm a liar, then, am I? Just as you please. You hear that, gentlemen? Oh, heavens, grant me patience. I shall fly out of my skin. It'll be so much the better for your pocket. Calf skin's in good demand. I shall burst. Not here in the street, I beg you. That'd be disgusting. <laughs> Gentlemen, I can no longer avoid flogging them. <laughs> Now, I suggest you put him under the pump where he can cool off. Well, <laughs> Bee Hunter, you ain't changed none. I see no reason for it, Symbol Rig. How you been? Oh, like a wild horse. Uh, wants you to meet a friend of mine. Well, Colonel Crockett, it's a pleasure to know you, sir. How'd you know it was the Colonel? Well, I heard you was in town. Heard you were going to Nacogdoches. I, uh, thought you might let me ride along with you. I know the way, middle and well. Why, we'd be glad to have you come along with us. The trails are mighty dangerous these days. How so? A band of murdering renegades been raising hair from here to Texas. Well, since nobody else has tamed the critters, maybe we'll get the chance. Well, now, Colonel, that's a possibility that stirs my liver. Well, now, that reminds me of a man. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Davy Crockett, American. Our story will continue in just a moment after this important message. Young men of America, your country is building a mighty air force to maintain the security of our nation. This means that there is a job for you, the chance to do an important job with one of the finest organizations of its kind in the world today, the United States Air Force. If you're between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, have had two or more years of college and are otherwise qualified, the Air Force needs you as part of the Aviation Cadet Training Program. For complete details, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Davy Crockett, American. I'd 
like to have a little wife, I reckon I know who. I'd like to have a little son, a little daughter, too. Mm -hmm. Ah, that sure is a romantic song, B. Hunter. What you looking at, Colonel? Buzzards. You can just make them out. Circling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably a dead buffalo. I think we better have a look. Come on. <laughs> I've seen some bad sights. We'd this... only come a little sooner. We might have helped. Won't do any good to figure that way. Best thing to do now is we bury these poor folks. Try and follow the trail of the murdering devils that did this. Yeah. We're only a day away from Nagadosis. If we ride hard, we can get there sooner. We could rouse out some friends that got there and track these critters into the ground. I'm for doing it ourselves. I know we're all of the rhinoceros breed, but the bee hunter's right, Thimbleek. Be too many for us. Let's go see some of your friends in Akadoshis. Oh, oh boy. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Colonel, <laughs> why don't you and Thimble Rig get bedded down here for the night and I'll go on and see the sheriff. Sounds reasonable. Hadn't we all better see him? Oh, no, that won't be necessary. Besides, he. He's got a daughter named Kate, and I'm kind of burning to see her. <laughs> Colonel, I think we ought to go along to make sure he doesn't set fire to the house. <laughs> oh, we'll trust him. See you tomorrow, boy. Yeah. Come on. Uh, evening, stranger. What you got in the way of lodging for a couple of tired alligators? Good evening, sir. I don't exactly recollect your name. Well, it's no consequence. We just like... I'm pretty sure I've seen you somewheres, both of you. Traveling to the western country, I presume. Presume anything you please, but don't trouble us with your presumptions. Oh, no offense, no offense, sir. I wouldn't be thought uncivil by any means. I always calculate to treat everyone with civility. Well, treat us all by answering our first question. Well, I can't give you lodging without knowing who you are. Oh, you can't, can't you? Well, I'll tell you who I am right enough. I'm shaggy as a bear, wolfish about the head, active as a cougar, and can grin like a hyena till the bark will curl off a gum log. There's a sprinkling of all sorts in me, from the lion down to the skunk. And if you don't hurry up and give me and the colonel a place to bed down, I'll guarantee you'll pronounce me an entire zoological institute before I'm through with you. You understand? Oh, dear, dear, yes. The colonel, you said. Colonel who? I'd like to have a little farm and leave such scenes as these Where I could live without a care completely at my ease And is there nothing else you'd like to have to make you happy? Yes, there is, my gentle Kate. I'll tell you what it is. I'd like to have a little wife. I... Oh, hello, Colonel. I have a feeling I'm interrupting. No, not at all. I, I want you to meet my Kate. I'm not your Kate. How do you do, Colonel? Edward's been telling me about you. <laughs> She's my Kate, Colonel, no matter what she says. Well, she is. You're a lucky man. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Well, I guess we got here just too late. Sheriff and about all the men in town are out hunting those devils. They wiped out some settlers south of here and riled everybody up. Well, I'm glad they're being chased after. Sorry we didn't get a chance to join in. Thimble Rig and I are off for Texas in the morning. You planning to join us? Well, I know the trail, Midland Well. You ought to have somebody along who knows it. Midland Well? Why, he knows every foot of it like the palm of his hand. He and his Indian friends go bee hunting all over this territory. Oh, Kate, you, you mustn't brag about me. We'll leave the tavern about sunup. You be there? I'll be there, Colonel. And we'll see you later. Thimble Rick just bought himself one of these new Vicksburg hats. Yeah? <laughs> I had to see he don't get in any trouble with it. Does make him look a mite peculiar. I bet. Ma'am, it, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Colonel. 
I, um, I hope you'll see that Edward stays out of trouble, too. Ha, 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 my Kate, my Kate, my wonderful Kate. <sighs> oh, Kate was mine and I was here, fiddly I oh, fiddly I D. Uh, be sure to stop in on your way back, Colonel. Mr. Mudge, I'll do my best to avoid it. Fine, fine. I aim to please. Hey, bee hunter, come on! Now, 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 Thimble Rig. Don't rush a man in love. But it's time we was on our way, Colonel. A few minutes one way or other won't matter to us. Here he comes. Wow! Ain't she pretty? You forgive him? Forgive him? <laughs> I think he's plumb out of his head to go anywhere without him. <laughs> Goodbye, friend. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. We'll see you when we get yeah, back. Yeah. Saddle and bridle and booted rode he, a plume in his helmet, a sword at his knee. But, but home, home came, came the saddle, all bloody, bloody to see. And home came the steed, but home never came he. <laughs> How much further to the Sabine River? Another hour, maybe a little less. Should pick up some buffalo sign soon. Of course, with that hat he's wearing, the buffalo probably all run right into the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> What's the matter with this hat? Well, I don't rightly know. It might not be the hat. Might be your head. Aw, oh, bee hunter, that ain't no way to talk. <laughs> I'm a truthful man, you ask me. Ain't that so, Colonel? That's so. What do you think of my hat, Colonel? I don't know if I could give an opinion, Thimble Rig. Why not? Well, it puts me in mind of that terrible cold winter we had a few winters back. Well, what's that got to do with my hat? Well, to speak directly, Thimble Rig, it leaves me about that cold. Ha 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 ha! Ah, Colonel, you've hurt me bad. You've hurt me awful bad. Now, uh oh, oh, boys, I think we better ride. Burn my old shoes if you ain't right. Yes, yeah, I'm all right. Must be nearly 50 of them skunks. I'd rather count them from a greater distance. Horse, pick up your feet. They're gaining, Colonel. There's no place on this prairie to make a stand. The Sapien's over the next ridge. We can hold him off from the other side. No, oh, no. He'd pick us off before he can make it. I ain't exactly friendly to that idea. There she is. That island there. Make for that. Oh, just let me get where I can pin one of those wolves in my sights. Yeah. Good thing they don't know how to shoot very straight. Well, we'll give them a lesson or two directly. All right, boys. Pick your man. Those three eager gorillas ought to be good for a starter. Fire! That's fair to middle and shooting. Three for three. You think we clipped their horns? We may have bent them a little. Probably made a matter in a hat full of rattlesnakes. I don't think it'll be long before they try their luck on us. Yeah, that was my feeling. How do you figure to get off here? We, we'll borrow a little trick from the engine. Get the horses into the river. Let them swim downstream. We'll hold on. Yeah. In the dark, if we're quiet, they won't see us. Good enough. Let's go before they change our minds. Too late! Here they come! Oh. for a while last night, whether we was ever going to see it. Why, Thimble Rig, that's an insult to the Colonel and me. Yeah, didn't you know as long as we were there, you were as safe as a babe in his mother's arms? Well, of course, the sheriff and his boys showing up, that didn't help any, did it? Well, I think it added to the glory of the moment. 
Made it somewhat more noisy. Yeah, and left somebody to clean up the mess we'd made. The colonel and I, that is. They're a couple of real low-down wild men, ain't you? Yeah! Listen to me holler. I'm glad you recognize us for what we are, Thimble Rig. Of course, you know my own theory is you hadn't been wearing that for stiffer's hat, them poor souls might have let us go our way without any excitement. So I think the bee hunter here, and I owe you an apology. <laughs> it's a fine hat, Thimble Rig. A raven beauty of a hat. Yeah, it's a roost of a hat. A monumental monument to the glory of all hats. Well, gentlemen, I misjudged you sorely. And for that, I take off this flaming headpiece of joy to which you refer and bow. Well, since it's off, Thimble Rig, why not leave it off until we uh, find those buffalo? <laughs> I love my Kate, and my Kate loved me. None so fair did I ever see. And so off they rode, Davy Crockett and his two friends, Thimble Rig and the Bee Hunter. Much befell them on the trail before the gates of the Alamo closed behind them. On the day before that little fort fell, Colonel Davy Crockett wrote these final words in his journal. Go ahead! Liberty and independence forever! Those words can mean everything or nothing, all depending on what you believe. To Colonel Davy Crockett, they meant everything, because he believed them and lived by them and finally died for them. Davy Crockett and men like him made up the past out of which we have grown. America is depending on her leaders in the air. If you're a young man between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, have had two or more years of college and are otherwise qualified, you are eligible to join the ranks of America's leaders in the air. You can become an aviation cadet. The defense of our nation hangs heavily on our air strength, the finest in the world. But we cannot relax our efforts. The Air Force still needs pilots and aircraft observers. If you have the primary qualifications, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Ask about the aviation cadet training program. Do it now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>